Welcome back to another edition of Richard Tech, where we bring you only the finest of vintage multimeters and electronics of days gone by. Well, 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 isn't this a gorgeous looking vintage multimeter from a name we all know and love, Micronta. The Micronta Digital Multimeter, model number 22-198. The 22198 was released, believe it or not, way back in 1979 for a whopping $79.99 US dollars. With today's inflation, <laughs> that is, are you sitting down, almost $340 US. Can you imagine? Liquid Crystal Digital Technology was, uh, you know, just getting started. Look at that LCD readout. They were bragging that they had an LCD readout display. And as well, we have that beautiful looking dual rotary selector switch. You gotta love that. And at the bottom, we have our on off switch, power switch. So simple, yet so darn functional. Here are the test inputs, positive and negative. Let's not forget that was way before color coding became a thing. 1000 volts DC, 500 volts AC, 200 rather milliamps DC uh, maximum voltage. So they're telling you pretty well most of the specs uh, right on the top of the meter. Good looking meter, I gotta say. And we have this very interesting uh, carry kind of thing going on here, a handle, what have you, but it acts as a tilt stand so you can hang it up like so or Put it down for that good looking till stand look. Oh man, I love of course it. there's no backlight on this meter, but that three and a half digit LCD dis display is really crisp, really easy on the eyes. So all things considered, a uh, very good looking LCD for the time. On the back of the meter, we have that Radio Shack logo. And look at that, made in Korea. A lot of uh, Micron to Radio Shack meters at the time were fabricated in Korea. This is powered by one nine volt battery with an easy off like that. And there is our telltale pull out fuse with that cutesy little red ribbon that uh, Radio Shack was famous for. Hence the little things that make up the uh, all around attention to detail, isn't it? Look at those little risers for them on all ends, corners of the meter. So when you're flat on the ground, it's actually not completely touching the ground. You're elevated by a couple of millimeters. Very nice. And check out those big, beautiful, bold fonts for the range settings themselves. Very nice, very easy on the eyes. And I like how they color coded the red for AC and DC volts. Input jacks, just like so that uh, banana style plug. These are not the originals that came with the meter, unfortunately, but they're very similar. By the way, this was gifted to me by my father. Thanks, Pops. He bought it brand new back in the day. Smart man. Okay, let's have a quick DC accuracy test because I, for one, would really like to know. So first thing we wanna do is put it into DC volts as we can see. So there we are, DC volts. Now we're gonna select our voltage itself. This is a five volt reference. So we're gonna put it to the 20 volt marker, which is where we are at. Okay. How close after all these years, 40 plus years, and we are looking at 4.96 volts. Hey, considering the time, we're talking over 40 years, uh, wow, very, very good. Right now it's plugged into an extension cord, AC volts, 119.1. Remember, this was not true RMS, not back then, but uh, still very close. Meter was fairly big as well. Look, I have it right beside another Micronta and it is definitely towering. And it's also beside an old horseshoe and it's looking pretty big too. <laughs> Three Phillips screws take off the back and oh, wow. I'm telling you, oh, this is like, I can smell the seventies right now. Oh, that smells so good. They didn't mess around back in the 70s. No, no, no. They gave us shielding on almost every meter I've ever opened up. And that is a good thing. Okay, let's take a look at that rat's nest. I'm telling you, that is one cassophony of everything. Look at that. Um, the beauty of it is this meter is completely functional. Haven't had any issues with it. Uh, my father used it sparingly, but uh, yeah, no, no issues whatsoever. It is just a, a little bit cakey. 
I might clean it. You know, some of this flux is just the way they used the flux back then. Um, but I probably will give it a little cleaning just to, just to, you know, give it that mid-century overhaul. Mid-century. Gotta love that. Look at those input jacks. Oh, screwed in there with the nuts and a little bit of solder as well. This even had an optional 9 volt adapter, uh, as you can see here. So if you wanted to plug it in instead of using up 9 volt batteries, you could. And I'm telling you, it's those little touches. Look at the springs, the metal springs they've used uh, for that handle. Those two selector knobs also come off very easily. And uh, we have to unscrew those in order to take the rest of the PCB off. And just a little unscrewsy. And plopping them off the back. Oh yeah. Oh, beautiful. And there we go. Oh, this is a thing of beauty. Over here we have the opposite side of the meter and look at that more shielding as well. And look at this thing of beauty. This is the 7106 LCD uh, controller chip. So that is what powered the 22198, uh, giving us all this nice liquid crystal uh, digital display. The uh, other models from uh, Radio Shack by Kronta, the 22191, for instance, utilized a Seiko. I believe it was the SXC 1901F. So, um, but alas, in this model at least, we have that venerable 7106. Very, very nice. All hand soldered, obviously, and a really nice attention to detail here. Well, this is something to look at, isn't it? Man, they definitely took their time back in the day when they were putting these together. It's really interesting how the LCD component is really a separate entity from the rest of the main board. Very, very neat. I really hope you enjoyed this vintage look down retro memory lane. You, me, and my Kranta 22198.